Dear Chairman and distinguished members of the panel, dear audience, my name is Judith Karachani. I'm a research fellow working with Dr. Galakis at the Minneapolis Heart Institute and a cardiologist working with Dr. Ungi at the University of Saget, Hungary. It is my pleasure to present to you today this case entitled Use of Retrograde Dual Lumen Catheter in Percutaneous Coronary Intervention of Chronic Total Occlusions. I do not have any disclosures. Our patient is a 54-year-old man who presented with medically refractory stable angina and dyspnea on exertion. He had history of hypertension, dyslipidemia, and smoking. He presented to the ER of another hospital with chest pain in July 2018, and ACS was ruled out. Later on, he underwent elective cardiology examination. The echo showed ejection fraction of 50%, and there were no wall motion abnormalities. He underwent coronary angiography in August 2018, which found two vessel disease, an RCACTO and a significant circumflex stenosis. Circumflex PCI was first found with one drug aging stent. After the procedures, his symptoms improved but did not disappear. It could not be controlled with maximal medical therapy, so the decision was made to proceed with the CTO PCI and he presented it to our center. On the dual injection, we can see the RCACTO. There is a side branch at the proximal cap, nice septal collaterals from the LAD, and also epicardials from the circumflex. So to summarize again, our target lesion is in the RCA. There is a side branch at the proximal cap. The lesion length is approximately 40 millimeters. There is a good re zone at the distal vessel and nice septal collaterals from the LAD. Our cat lab follows the hybrid, hybrid approach. So our plan based on this was first to start with retrograde approach. And after that, if it's not successful, switch to undergrade wire escalation or ADR. So we started with the retrograde approach and tried to cross the septal collaterals with the Sion guide wire and the fine cross microcatheter, as we can see on this uh, image. After a couple of minutes, it was successful. So we reached at the, the distal cap and we did a micro injection to visualize it better. We can see the bifurcation on this image. Then we tried several guide wires, but couldn't cross with the Gaia second, confluence of Pro 12, Hornet 14, or Pilot 200. So then we decided to switch to undergrade approach and we tried the same guide wires but did not succeed to cross, to cross the proximal cap. Then with this side base technique, we trapped the fine cross microcatheter with a 3 by 15 millimeter balloon in the acute marginal bench and uh, modified the proximal cap and tried to puncture um, with Hornet 14, still no success. Then we switched to Fielder XT, a software guide wire, and did the knuckle wire technique all the way to the crux and to the distal. Uh, re-entry was performed to the PD branch. Then we took a retrograde Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter as we can uh, see on this video. And then we tried to achieve reverse card with several guide wires, again for confluence of Pro 12, Pilot 200. And then after a lot of minutes of trying we finally succeeded and could proceed to the distal part of the RCA. Then we did successful entering uh, to the guideliner for externalization with the RG3. Then we positioned the Sasuke microcatheter on the gray leaf with a guideliner all the way down to the bifurcation. This is a fairly big bifurcation so we really wanted to preserve it. That's why we did with the dual lumen microcatheter reverse wire technique and we reached the PL as we can see on this video. So finally both the PL and the PD branches were open but there was a small perforation at the collateral. We did echo during the procedure and also after the procedure, uh, but there was no fluidum in the pericardium and we decided to manage this conservatively. Then we planted a DES in the distal part of the RCA, followed by another DES in the mid part of the RCA, and the 4x34 mm DES all the way to the ostium. On the next NGO, we could see that there is a dissection and the bifurcation. We wanted to manage the bifurcation with a single stand technique, uh, so we tried first POBA to resolve the dissection, but it didn't resolve. So then we decided to proceed with a culotte technique and we implanted a 275 by 24 millimeter DES uh, in the direction of the PL branch. Then we did kissing dilation with 3 by 50 millimeter balloons, and this is the final result of the bifurcation. After we did uh, pot and pot staliation of all the stented area, this is the final result. The procedure time was 225 minutes. So the learning points of our case is that persistence is a key to success. 
The change of crossing strategies in CTOPCI is essential. Initial plan may not work, but you must have a plan. The power knuckle technique is a useful technique in these lesions. And the Sasuka dual lumen microcatheter is excellent to preserve bifurcations, especially applied with reverse wire technique. Thank you for your attention.